What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back to do a lineup builder here on FanDuel for week four of the NFL slates. Feels crazy that we're already to week four already. Um, doesn't feel like there's been four weeks of NFL action, but uh, here we are, four weeks in, and it's time to break it down over here on FanDuel. We're going to be doing the lineup builder show as poor always on Fridays from here to the rest of the season. We'll be doing the lineup builder on Fridays unless something comes up. Obviously, life happens. Uh, I'll obviously update you guys if it does, but a couple of disclaimers before I get this started. This is not the lineup you should play necessarily. Um, if you do, may not be the lineup I play. It changed last week. It's Friday. We'll get news. Things will change. Um, there's not a whole lot of news we're waiting for this week, but there is some, still some. My thoughts can change between now and Sunday. So I'm just going to say this before every video now and where I build a lineup. Uh, so yeah, you're just going to have to deal with it. Also, someone sent me a DM on Twitter and they said, how can you give advice on FanDuel when you have $0 in your account or like $8 in your account? So people who know me know that I play... The same, I play roughly the same amount of FanDuel every week. It's like 50 to 100 bucks, and I withdraw all of my winnings. So I just re-enter the 50 to 100 bucks and just withdraw the rest. And if I have to redeposit, that's fine. But I keep most of my funds in my PayPal from both FanDuel and DraftKings. I never just leave them sitting on my account usually. So that's why my funds on FanDuel are at zero dollars because I already reserved all. Well, I reserve most of my contests. I'll probably deposit. There is another couple contests that I want to play. Um, so that's why I have $0 for anyone wondering. All right, let's do this. Starting off at defense. Obviously, I like the upper tier. The Chargers against Bethard. I mean, I don't love the Bears this week. They're more of a play on DraftKings. 4300 is pretty expensive over here. The Really, the options on FanDuel boil down to me is this three right here. Lions, Titans, and Browns. I think the Titans' defense is better than people give them credit for. Um, and at 3500 they're a fair enough value play that I, that I like them. I think they're my favorite. But uh, Browns, I don't love taking defenses on the road. I like taking them at home where the crowd can get really into it on third downs. Uh for some mistakes, different things like that. Crowd home field advantage is it, it, it's a three point boost in spreads, and it, it's a nice little boost for defenses. I like the Detroit defense next. I think it should be a slow paced game against Dallas, which should keep the point score down theoretically. Um, but they're probably the worst defense out of the three. I like the Browns going to face Oakland. Oakland hasn't been very good this year, so. I like that. For the purpose of this lineup, we're going to throw in the Titans um, against the Eagles. I, I think the Eagles are a good team, obviously, but I think maybe the Titans can limit them to 17 to 24 points. Um, they're at home. Um, they have been slow. They have been playing a slower offense, kind of chew the clock type offense, and so I think maybe that as long as Mariota doesn't Mariota doesn't put them in a bad situation, I think we should be good. Uh, with the Titans defense. I may even play them on DraftKings where the Bears will be uber mega massive chalk. Evan Ingram is out. We'll talk more about that at the wide receiver position and running back positions. There is one clear lock of the week. We'll just plug him in the lineup. It's Eric Ebron at 5500 Stays the same price. Jack Doyle has been ruled out with his hip. Ebron saw 11 targets last week, five of which were caught for... 35 yards he caught three of them on the final possession where the eagles were in massive prevent defense um three of his targets came in the end zone he was unable to catch any of them i think he should be looking solid with luck not throwing it deep down the field i think he brought in store for somewhere between seven and ten targets uh, moving on down here, we got a couple of options david and joku i like him he saw seven targets each of the first two weeks Caught his two targets for uh, 38 yards last week with Baker. I think I'm one week away with David Njoku. I want to see it before I play him uh, with Baker, and so I'll hold off one more week. Value special over here on FanDuel is Tyler Eifert. Finally looked involved in the offense last week. 
eight targets for six receptions, played a higher volume of snaps than he did in week ones and two when they were easing him back in. Uh, I do really like Tyler Eifert at 4,600. Uh, if you want to get off of Ebron, especially in GPPs, I really love me some Tyler Eifert this weekend. We'll go to the flex to lock him in, and that is Giovanni Bernard. He's 100% lock for me on, on DraftKings, and I'm going to play him on FanDuel. He's not a lock of all locks, but I do love him over here on, on FanDuel. We'll, go, we'll run over a couple of stats here the last two weeks against the Falcons. So they're a... They're a pass funnel team to the running back, uh, and they um, they were last in the league with Keanu Neal and Deion Jones in their lineup. Without them, in week two, Christian McCaffrey had 15 targets, 14 receptions, and 102 receiving yards. C.J. Anderson also had two looks, uh, but didn't make a reception. In week three against the Saints, Alvin Kamara had 20 targets, 15 receptions for 124 yards. Zach Lyon had two targets, two receptions, six yards. And Williams had one target, one reception for one yard. Though That is 40 targets to running backs, not necessarily out of the backfield, but just to running backs in general. That is 40 targets that they saw. Um, just Giovanni, I'm just hammering Giovanni Bernard and everything. Um, and at 6400 on Van Duel, he's such a value. I'm just playing him. At wide receiver, we have ourselves a value play. In the Cleveland and Oakland game, we have Antonio Callaway at the minimum price over here. Now, keep in mind, we also have Richard Higgins at minimum price as well. I love Callaway for cash, Higgins for GPP. Uh, Callaway saw 11 targets last week. I don't think it'll be 11. But he has big playability as well as should have a nice supply of targets from Baker Mayfield, who Baker Mayfield looked to like Antonio Callaway in their short amount of time. Uh, those are kind of the locks of the week for me on FanDuel, Geo, Eric Ebron, and Callaway. Like I said, Geo's not a lock. You don't have to play him over here, but he saw 100% of the touches for running backs last week uh, for the Bengals. I would assume he gets 90 plus at least this week. If uh, there's only two running backs active again, I'm locking him in. If there's a third, you could go elsewhere if you really want to, uh, but I still really like him. We'll go to a value play special now, and that is back to talking about it, uh, Evan Ingram. That is Sterling Shepard coming in at 6,200 over here on FanDuel. Should see an increased target share with no... Evan Ingram, he's seen seven targets, five targets, and seven targets in three weeks. He'll get Ken Crawley this week, I believe, uh, unless unless they... I would assume he gets Ken Crawley this week. Let me say that. I assume he gets Ken Crawley this week. I'm not 100% sure. I assume he'll get Ken Crawley this week. And if you don't know, Ken Crawley was the one on Calvin Ridley last week. And Ken Crawley ranks last by football... Um, by uh, Pro Football Focus, and I believe he ranks last in Football Outsiders DVOA against wide receivers. One of the worst starting, or one of the worst number two corners in all of the NFL. He's better than like number three and number four wide receivers that he ranks above, or corners that he ranks above, but based on facing number two wide receivers, he ranks dead last in the league. I do like Quincy Anunua. He should be running the routes without A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey on him, uh, so he should see the lion's share of targets, uh, short and dinky passes. I really like Geronimo Allison. If Randall Cobb is out, I think Allison um, should see an increase in targets if he is out. Uh, Tyler Boyd. I like Tyler Boyd again. Uh, A.J. Green should be matched up a lot with Desmond Trufant. Uh, with John Ross on the outside just running go routes. The middle of the field should be open for Tyler Boyd, Gio Bernard, and Tyler Eifert. And then we have Calvin Ridley, wherever Ridley is. I do like Ridley at 6,300. I, I, I don't see it as point chasing. I liked him last week, and I like him again this week. I don't like him for 146 and three touchdowns, but he's still the number two option in that offense. Uh what is it? William Jackson should be on Julio Jones, which means Calvin Ridley will get Drake or Patrick or someone else. Uh, William Jackson. You don't want him on William Jackson. If somehow they shade Julio away from William Jackson and Ridley's on there, that's when that can go horribly wrong. Um, I love Julio and GPPs. Um, 
I don't know if I love Calvin in cash, but then I don't necessarily love him in GPPs because he's going to be owned. Um, but I do like Calvin Ridley this week. Uh, moving on up to the upper tier here uh, of guys that I probably won't play. I love me some Will Fuller. Uh, seems to be one of Deshaun Watson's favorite targets through two weeks. 11 targets against the Giants. Nine targets against the Titans. And in this game against the Giants, Watson just missed him on some atrocious throws. And I believe Watson even had a pass. It should be 12 targets, but Watson threw a pass so bad it wasn't even... <laughs> Fuller didn't even get credited for the target, but I'm pretty sure it was intended for Will Fuller. I watched the whole game because I had him on DraftKings last week. Like I said, love me some Julio Jones and GPPs. If they can shade him away from William Jackson, if Jackson doesn't shadow him, and Julio can kind of run free on the other uh, corners, I think Julio could be in store for a huge game. I think I'm going to be throwing in a couple of GPPs on DraftKings just to play me some Julio Jones. We'll come back to this to get our last spot because there's a couple of running backs that I want to talk about, and it's mostly just the top end. We'll go down and talk about a few cheaper-priced ones. But uh, favorite plays up here at the top, Alvin Kamara. His equity over here on FanDuel is not as high as it is on DraftKings because of the receptions being half point instead of full point and there being no bonus for 100 yards receiving or rushing. His equity kind of drops a little bit. He scored about 11 points less over here than he did on DraftKings last week. Uh, had just an absolutely monster game on DraftKings. Had a good game here on FanDuel. But I'm going to be playing Alvin Kamara this week against the Giants. Breeze looks like he just wants to throw the ball to Kamara and Thomas, and that's it. So until he shows me something else, I'm going to play Alvin Kamara. Now it comes down to do you want MG3, Zeke, or Barkley? I like myself some MG3. I love Zeke, but I think that game, like I already discussed, is going to be a slow-paced game. So I don't love it. And then Saquon... I like Saquon, but against New Orleans, if the Saints get up big, how much work does Saquon get? Does he get a lot of pass game work still? Or uh, I, I don't want to take the risk that uh, Saquon doesn't get the passing game targets that we need him to get if he's not able to rush the ball because the game's a blowout. I do love Barkley's touchdown equity he's had through two week, or three weeks. He's gotten a lot of red zone looks, which is what you want to see. Um, other than that, Tevin Coleman I like, but he's a, maybe just a tear too expensive over here on FanDuel. Come down here, same with Carlos Hyde and Lamar Miller. I like them, but I think they're a shade too expensive over here on FanDuel compared to their DraftKings prices. If Corey Clement sits, I like me some Jay Ajayi this week. Clement is questionable, and Sproles is already unlikely to play. So I like me some Jay Ajayi if they all sit out. Uh, moving down the list here. Um, I like Sony Michelle at 5,900. Should take over the lead running back role with James White coming in on receiving downs. You saw last week 14 carries for 50 yards. He also is getting targets, so he has a little bit of a help to his floor. I think he'll get a little bit more than the 3 and 2. Maybe bump that up to like a 4, maybe 5 targets. I'm not going to get crazy. Maybe 4 targets for Sony Michelle um, this week. That's not how he's going to get there for you. You need him to find the end zone, probably. Uh, or, or He might be able to rush for 100 yards, but I'm not banking on that. Going down here, where is... Where is... Uh, what's his face? Chris Carson. Chris Carson right here. Interesting play, especially over here on FanDuel. Um, I like him at 6,400. Probably won't play him in cash, but I like him. I like Matt Burita, but he's more of a DraftKings play than a FanDuel play. So we got two spots left, quarterback and wide receiver. We got 8,050 remaining. Let me get this back to the right thing. Price. Price. There we go. We'll look at the quarterbacks here. I like all the top guys. Um, Matt Ryan, I like him more on Fan or on DraftKings. I do FanDuel. He's the fourth priced over here on FanDuel. He's like the 13th priced over on DraftKings or something like that. Um I like Deshaun Watson, Russ Wilson, and Andy Dalton, I think, over here. You can go cheap, but I don't really think you need it this week. I don't think it's, like, key that you come down here to, like... I would like Marcus Mariota a lot if he was healthy, but he's just not healthy. Uh, so I can't play him at that 6200 price tag. I think people will play Baker Mayfield. I don't really want to play Baker. And so it just pretty much comes down to Dalton... Russ or Watson. So if you put in um, 
Dalton, you got 8,700 left at wide receiver. Gives you DeAndre Hopkins if you want it, Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, AJ Green, all sorts of good wide receivers here. Um, lots of interesting cho- choices to be made. What I think I'm going to do is drop Dalton for now and drop Melvin Gordon the third. This is something you'll have to play around with depending on what you want in your lineup. So we'll go to Zeke. I like the matchup against Detroit. Like I said, I just don't like the the, the pace. But if Zeke can get there, um, I just think that game's going to be quickly moving by. So he's going to have to get his. Um, we'll go back to Dalton. We'll stay with Dalton. But that leaves us 9,200 now. And now you can play Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas just had an absolute huge share in the offense. 40 targets through three weeks. 10, 12, 16 receptions, a buck 80 and a buck 29. Um, I don't, th- maybe Janoris Jenkins shadows him, um, but Michael Thomas runs a lot of his routes out of the slot. Jenkins doesn't go into the slot a ton. He goes into the slot shadowing, but he doesn't go in there a ton. Uh, but I just like Michael Thomas. That offense has become Michael Thomas, Kamara, and then every once in a while a deep ball to Ted again. That's, that's about the offense for the Saints at this point. Um, I really like Michael Thomas, so I'd like to do the best I can to get him into my lineup this week. Uh, but that's going to do it, guys. That's the first look for Fan... Or not for first look, but that's the lineup builder for FanDuel. Uh, like always, make your own adjustments, play with it, see what you like. Maybe you like Melvin Gordon, so you take Michael Thomas out and you tinker a little... Or maybe you take Andy Dalton out so you can have Melvin Gordon and Michael Thomas. I think you had to come down to like a Derek Carr or a, you could play Baker. If you really love Baker this week, you could play that Baker, Gordon, Thomas lineup. Uh, just kind of depends on what you want. You come off a of Sterling Shepard. You could come off of Ebron and go down to Eifert and get a bunch of money to spend. Uh, there are a ton of different ways you can go. Uh, but that's just my initial thoughts. Like always, it's more about the process than it is about the lineup. Um, just trying to help you all out with uh, thinking through your lineups uh, for the week for Slate here. But I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video for the DraftKings uh, final look. So peace out, guys.